What's up, New York Mets fans? It's your boy CP, and welcome back to the latest edition of the True Mets Talk podcast. It is a True Mets Talk day after recap. The New York Mets are coming off of a fresh series in which they got swept with ease by the Seattle Mariners. We'll talk about the current state of this offense and a little bit of a look ahead to this upcoming Oakland A series. Let's get into it. You are now watching the True Mets Talk podcast, talking New York Mets baseball 24-7, 365, with your host, CP. All right, let's get into it. Make sure you all hit that thumbs up on this video. I definitely appreciate it if you like what you hear and if you like the New York Mets and the content on this channel, subscribe if you haven't done so already. And you all, as the viewers, let me know in the comment section down below what you think about the current state of the New York Mets, whether it's the bullpen, whether it is the lineup, the starting pitching, whatever it may have you. Or even if it's just a prediction of what the Mets do against the Oakland A's, we'll talk about that series coming up. Make sure you let me know. Like I mentioned, a very brief series recap to start this video off before we get into the offense. I have nothing to speak about with this offense, with the Mets collectively over the three games in this set, only scoring one single run. And I apologize because I did make a typo in this slide. The Mets lost game three to the Mariners by a score of one to 12, not zero to 12. But you understand my point. The pitching was more exciting, bar none, by far, than the offense. And honestly, the pitching had its flaws as well, especially the bullpen in that third game. But let's talk about the starting pitchers. Uh, Jose Quintana gets the ball first. Besides really one mistake in the second inning to Ryan Bliss hanging the curveball on 0-0, he pitched a gem. And honestly, it's unfortunate because I know there's a lot of rhetoric around this Mets fan base that Carlos Mendoza left him in the game too long. Obviously, he surrendered the uh, insurance runs. Two RBI single to Leo Rivas in that seventh inning before he did get pulled. But that stat line does not do enough justice to the way that Jose Quintana pitched. Obviously, once the Mariners got the lead in that second inning, they didn't look back because the Mets offense was non-existent. Not only that game, but the entire series. But Jose Quintana definitely pitched a great game. And in opposition, Shamanaya, who was fantastic over his last two starts and has been fantastic. Overall, in this 2024 season, I even made a video about him and his mechanical tweaks, his his pitch distribution tweaks over the course of 2024. He struggled mightily in that middle game, 85 pitches over three innings of work and didn't even get to the fourth inning. It was a bullpen game from there on out. The Mets lose four to nothing. And like I said, I apologize about the typo, but the third game was absolutely ugly. The unfortunate thing about this is, is that Luis Severino, again, just like Jose Quintana, pitched way better than the stat line shows. He was pumping in strikes, 97 to 98 miles per hour. Uh, actually was getting a lot of strikeouts that game in Luis Severino's K rate, as the ESPN broadcast was mentioning, uh, in comparison to his previous seasons, is actually a little bit lower this season, but he's finding some profound success. And I think he threw the ball really well. The bullpen, on the other hand, as soon as Ryan Stanek came in and Adam Ottavino thereafter were absolutely putrid. Walks galore. They're walking everybody. Uh, Adam Ottavino obviously surrenders the home run to Cal Raleigh. And the Mariners just simply put a hurting on the New York Mets on Sunday Night Baseball. But like I said, we are going to move forward from this series. I'm sure this is a series that the players would like to forget, as well as us fans, especially those who stayed up all three nights watching West Coast time zones. I even did a post-game live stream at 12.45 a.m. Eastern Standard Time talking about a loss because that's how much I love our New York Mets. And if you do as well, like I said, make sure you subscribe and hit that thumbs up. But these are the updated wild card standings. The Padres and the Diamondbacks are red hot. They are both plus four in the standings category. The Braves and the Mets seem to be flip-flopping. The Braves are really struggling, even though Jorge Soler has revamped that lineup with multiple home runs. They did lose the series in Colorado to the Rockies, but they are still a half game ahead of the New York Mets for that third wild card spot. The Mets obviously are on the outside looking in and so are the Cardinals and the Giants and if the Mets aren't careful those two teams are right on their tails heading into this Oakland A series but let's just talk about 
the most important aspect of this video by far is the tale of two tapes. Ever since August 1st is what these stats entail, but really ever since the second half that's going on within this Mets lineup. On the left-hand side, obviously, you see the guys whose bats have gone ice cold. And then also on the right side, conversely, the guys whose bats are on fire and more or less are trying to carry this offense and try to at least in this four and six stretch over the last 10 on this road trip. Brandon Nemo is looking like a shell of himself, especially that very hot stretch that he had to end the first half of the season. He's batting 206 over his last 10 games or so, ever since August 1st, like I said, no home runs, nine strikeouts, and three extra base hits in the doubles category. J.D. Martinez has also fallen off a cliff. Ever since August 1st, he's batting 188 with no home runs and 11 strikeouts. Pete Alonso batting 222 over that stretch, three home runs, but also 17 strikeouts. And Mark Vientos rounds this group out, hitting 143, one home run and five strikeouts. Would like to cut a little slack for Mark Vientos. He's been phenomenal this season, but definitely the top three guys are immensely struggling. And the common denominator is and are the strikeouts. 9, 11, and 17, respectively, over those top three guys. They are chasing pitches out of the zone. They are getting into pitchers' counts, maybe watching one too many pitches go by that are strikes early in the count. And guys like Bryce Miller, Logan Gilbert, and Luis Castillo, they had a field day with these guys on the left, getting into chase at the multitude of off-speed pitches within their arsenal that they had. So, like I said, guys on the left need to step it up, and they need to step it up now because we're running into the part of the season and it quite frankly as soon as the second half started we were already in that part of the season where there are no excuses especially for a guy like Pete Alonso in his contract year especially him Brandon Nimmo has a contract JD Martinez is 36 37 going on 38 years old he'll probably ink another one year deal regardless of what he does this season but for Pete Alonso this is absolutely concerning especially when you take a look at how much money he might never really want this offseason, talking about his potential fit and coming back to the New York Mets. But like I said, it's a team effort. So these guys on the right-hand side, with their batting averages highlighted in green, have been doing exceptionally well. Francisco Lindor since August 1st, 318 batting average. Yes, the strikeouts are up. He's chasing a little bit more, but he's getting on base still at a high clip at that leadoff spot. Two doubles to go along with it. Jeff McNeil, who's been tearing it up since the second half started. 276 batting average, two home runs, five strikeouts, and two doubles. He had multiple hits along with Francisco Lindor in the Seattle series. And they were really the only two guys in this lineup to show up in that Seattle series. So hats off to them. Francisco Alvarez was going through a little bit of a bad stretch there. He's turned it around. Since August 1st, he's batting 280. The home runs still aren't there. He's still chasing those down and away sliders, just like Pete Alonso is. But he's been getting his fair share of base knocks over the last 10 games or so as well. And Harrison Bader, Mr. Clutch, Mr. Big Hit, Mr. Base Knock with runners in scoring position, two outs, whatever you want to call Harrison Bader. He's been a stud this entire season. And since August 1st, that is no exception. He is hitting 320 with no home runs, only four strikeouts and two doubles. But this lineup and the idea that I want to get across to you all is that this lineup still isn't performing as a cohesive unit. Still is not performing as a cohesive unit. So going into this Oakland series, these guys on the left better be ready. They got to be ready to help the guys that you see on the right here. Moving forward. Adam Ottavino, I know I've mentioned this in multiple streams, multiple episodes already, especially my pre-recorded episode talking about the bullpen roster moves that might present itself for the New York Mets here in August when we get guys back like Reed Garrett and we saw Alex Young go down and be optioned to make room for Reed Garrett. But also, Sean Reed Foley, also on the horizon, Daniel Nunez, same thing. Presumably, you're going to keep a lefty in this bullpen and none of the other righties in this bullpen I am willing to let go of in favor of Adam Ottavino. So regardless of what Adam Ottavino wants to say about the New York Mets potentially letting him go being foolish, the statistics don't lie. And I understand over the course of his nine outings or so before this Seattle series, he was fantastic. But you have to take a look at the leverage of situations that he was succeeding in. There was no leverage. There were five, six, multiple run leads that he was being successful in. 
Let's let's keep it a spade. That's exactly what it was for Adam Adovino. So when you go ahead and entrust in him to sort of mitigate the opposing offense when the Mets are already down and trying to post zeros to get back into the game, and he goes out there and does this in the Seattle series, one and one-thirds innings pitched, 31 pitches in those one and one-third innings pitched, three walks, one home run allowed in that last game to Cal Raleigh, and only two strikeouts. And also the fact that he cannot hold a single base runner on at all. He's not adjusting to the new MLB rules that promote base stealing whatsoever. What good is he to Carlos Mendoza? Does Carlos Mendoza entrust in him? I think the answer has been no, and it's going to continue to be no as long as he's on this roster. So what purpose does he serve? You tell me. Please. Enlighten me in the comments section. I know a lot of you all, of course, subscribe to this channel. I know your thoughts and opinions. Make sure you keep dropping them down below. But if you are new to the channel, perhaps maybe just subscribe. Please do not be afraid. Even if you don't agree with me with this offense or with Adam Adovino, let your comments be heard and we'll have a discussion in the live chat. Upcoming series, very simple, against the Oakland Athletics. At the minimum, if we're talking minimums here, you have to win this series, especially with the Braves utterly free-falling in their past however many games. You have to win this series. But if I knew any better, especially with how lousy that Seattle Mariners series was this past weekend, you have to sweep this series. Now, like I said, it's very hard to demand sweeps because these are all MLB teams at the end of the day. But that would be lovely. That would be lovely to make a statement to us fans, to themselves, to the front office, that even with a lousy series and getting swept by the Mariners with ease, that they are still a part of this wild card race, which they are. And we just saw in the previous slide. So like I said, the Oakland Athletics are 5-5 five and five in their last 10. The Mets are 4-6 and six in their last 10. The A's did get the luxury of playing a putrid White Sox team for three within their last 10. Three of their last 10 were against the White, so White Sox, I should say. Um, but yeah, the New York Mets need to go out there in front of the home crowd and make a statement. If you're a starting pitcher for the New York Mets and who they have lined up, game one is Paul Blackburn. Game two is David Peterson. And we get in game three, Jose Quintana back on the bump. You need to avoid a guy by the name of Brent Rooker at all costs. Brent Rooker. Avoid him. Do not pitch to him. He leads the Oakland Athletics pretty handily in every single offensive category. This lineup isn't great. Their pitching isn't great. And this is a sweepable, if not winnable, at the minimum, like I just said, series, if you're the Mets, just avoid Brent Rooker's bat. And you should be okay. The Mets going into this series are 61-57, and 57, four games over 500. Not to insult anybody's intelligence, but obviously. They were seven games over 500 before this Mariners series. Before they got swept. And the Oakland Athletics are at a measly 50 and 69. But like I said, at the end of the day, these are MLB teams and you cannot take each game or any game from here on out in this race for granted. So that's what I have for you all. Like I said, and visualize this graph or this slide, internalize it and watch the quality of the at-bats from everybody that you see on this screen or anybody else that makes their way into the starting lineup. It's going to be a tight race from here on out. The Mets are still in it until they're not. Let's go Mets. On this lovely Monday evening, we are trying to keep the positivity here. There are positives in the guys that are hitting the ball well. There are obviously negatives with the guys that aren't doing so well, especially in the bullpen and in the starting lineup. But this Mets team, can still turn it around. And even the second or first wild card spot is not out of the question. I say it all the time. The Padres, I have my opinions about them. I know the Diamondbacks are a good team, but it's not impossible to catch up to either one of those teams. It just takes another hot stretch. Let's go Mets. Let's go beat the Oakland Athletics. And I appreciate you all being here. Like I said, hit that thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, peace.
Thank you for watching the True Mets Talk podcast. Make sure you're tapping on that notifications button and checking out all the latest content on the channel. Thank you.